Are you ready, Michele? <laughs> okay, thanks everyone for coming back. So earlier today you learned from Thomas how exciting the system will be from a design or hardware point of view, and then you learn from Maria Grazia um, how to get access to this system, how to ask for the resources. So what I'm going to talk about is what you are on the system, what can you expect from a programmer or end user running application. So that's why I titled my talk as Programming Environment and Enabling Technologies, because it's not just about programming environment, it's about execution environment, <laughs> and the additional capabilities that you get from the uh, entire programming and execution environment on this new system. It's, it's pretty exciting. I mean, at least we are very excited. Um, <clears throat> so from our point of view, what we see is every user coming to the system would like to make efficient use of the system, be they are their a code developer, be they whether they want to use uh, already built applications that we provide uh, at CSCS or they want to experiment with new libraries. So we, what we view as the entire ecosystem uh, that what some components you see or you use the most and some components you don't see or, or you are not interested. But overall what we see is people would like to have robust compiler technologies and we do have in the, on the system. The things highlighted in green are not necessarily because of GPU, but these are newer items that you will find on this system, and I will talk a little bit more in detail in my talk. We have libraries and applications, and we will have system-specific tuned libraries. Then we have debugging and performance tools, so I will say a little bit more about some specific or new features that you will experience and find on the system. And then I will talk a little bit about execution environment, because when you are on the system, you would really like to find out how you request for a resource, how you find out how you use that resource, whether you are using it efficiently, or if you have your, some custom needs, how you go about doing it. So on this system, there are some innovative features in all these different directions. So I will try covering some of them, but of course, Time is limited, and I cannot go through all the details. So slowly and gradually, we will have some training courses. Uh, Themis will talk about it, where we cover some topics in details. And then we will try to have a very sort of interactive or detailed uh, uh, web pages for some of, uh, some of the new topics, where we will add information or start uh, providing you more details. So first thing is the easiest one, is compiler technologies. So I'm not making any assumption that all of you are on Rosa or Todi or on any other platform. But if you are, then you will find, from especially from a multi-core programming point of view, absolutely the same environment. So you have your typical compilers, Cray, GNU, Intel, PGI, in addition, you have NVIDIA. So for those of you who are on the XK7 system, absolutely nothing changes. So we have all the compiler wrappers that you get on, uh, on the system right now. And as you know, those compiler wrapper include your MPI. In some cases, they include OpenMP. Uh, you have, if you are on the XK7 system, you may already have experienced OpenACC. We have done few courses uh, past couple of years ago, and we do it re them regularly. So uh, for those of you who have been to one of those courses, you know this is a compiler, direct, directive-based compil uh, com uh, compilation is, uh, standard for accelerator. So the idea is, uh, on uh, unlike OpenMP, where you divide, describe your loop-level parallelism or task-level parallelism, in this case, you describe a parallelism, but with an intention of an offload model. It's not uh, explicit in, in there, and it may change over time because it's this this directive-based language is not necessarily for just for GPUs or just for offload environment. They are working on a new standard. You will learn more. Uh, as Themis will talk uh, in the next course. So this is something moving very quickly. 
uh, is uh, leading or bleeding it. We are learning ourselves, but as, uh, as Thomas explained in his call, there, there have already been some success stories using OpenACC. Then we have OpenCL. It will be available both on CPU and GPUs, and you can link it, it's just a driver uh, with any compiler. And then on top of everything, you can, of course, invoke basic NVIDIA compiler driver if you want, or if your code needs. And if you have want CUDA Fortran interface, you can get it from PGI. So from com a completeness point of view, there are absolutely no surprises. So you will have the same look and feel, all the environment. So I assume this would be good news for most of you, and uh, should be pretty straightforward. So next thing I talk about, and Thomas briefly uh, mentioned from an architectural or execution point of view, uh, what happens on the MPI level. So we work quite closely with Cray. So the idea being is if, if majority of your code or your data structures uh, sit on the GPU, we don't want this additional conceptual hurdle or optimization and tuning step where you take your data from GPU to the host memory and then over the network and back to the host memory. Because so many things can go right or wrong in that process. So we and some other institutes we, uh, or, or research labs, we worked together and then they started implementing this feature. And what conceptually what you do is you say, okay, if my pointer is sitting on a GPU, be it a CUDA malloc or OpenACC malloc or any other pointer, you just call your MPI routine directly on that. So the benefit is, your code simplifies, you don't need additional copying steps, but on top of that, you are adding some sort of performance portability from one accelerator platform to another accelerator platform to another other network. In fact, uh, one of my colleagues who's working very closely with both Cray and uh, MVAPIT and Finaband Alper, we find really perfect performance portability across different platforms. You can try it on Todi right now and today. For some messages sizes, it doesn't work very well, which will be better later, or will be a lot better later. But if you have, if you transfer large messages order of megabyte or more, you see really, really very good performance. So you can try it now if you want. The other thing, again, it's not, uh, is, is not GPU specific in any way, but it is some exciting development. So for those of you who follow MPI3, we did a course, I think about a year ago or so with Torsten on MPI3. We, have, we haven't tested these thoroughly, but we have had our files with non-blocking collective operations like I barrier or I all reduce and these features. So if you are interested in testing these things out, uh, you, you should be able to do this. So, and as Thomas said, the network is pretty robust. It's very robust for RDMA or one-sided operations. So for some of you who are rethinking uh, your scaling, or scalability of your codes or algorithms, this would, should be pretty exciting for you. Yes? Okay, so I, what the idea was that if you do a send, what you have to really do in 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 in, in a non uh, uh, accelerated code, you will do a mem copy from host pointer to the device pointer and specify a direction and do MPI. Uh, then uh, uh, and then you call the MPI and on the receiver you receive you do the same thing. When you, uh, I should have included an example where it says, when you, if you have direct MPI, you will have a GPU pointer here and here. So you will eliminate this extra copying back and forth. Yeah, that's a good thing. I, sh I should have uh, thought about that. I didn't want to put too much code on this thing, so I thought I would say and explain it, but that's the idea. And an open ACC is redundant, it's done behind the scene. From a design point of view, there is probably already some copying going on in the background, but it's tuned and optimized for a given node configuration. So it works. Um, 
so as we know, and we have done a, a quite a bit of a study of which applications people do use and do use a lot on our systems like uh, Rosa, a production machine. We, we thought there is, we would like to invest some time understanding and studying whether an already accelerated version of these applications exist. And what we will do then is we will make them available on the system. What that means is uh, that if a standard release version of an application, not an experimental branch, but a standard release version of an application comes with a GPU port, we build it on the system and make it available. Over time, we will provide instructions on how to use and how to tune your code. But the idea being that you can expect at least some of the code with this sign on it, they will have GPU accelerated components. And if you want, you can just go on, load the module, and try these applications. Again, it's not an exhaustive list, and we, don't, we support only those applications that are used by multiple user and groups. So, but the idea being, because we already accumulated a lot of experience and have some collaboration with external groups, what we can do is if you are indeed uh, interested in using any other third party application where there seem to be a GPU port that already exists, you can write an email to the user support and say, okay, I'm interested in building and trying out this application and we can see if we can sort of work with you in building that. We, 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 we will be, we are not making sort of a commitment here that we will absolutely be able to do it for you, but using our experience with these scores, we can certainly give it a try. And for the most part, if, 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 if a GPU version is available as a standard release, it's pretty robust, pretty straightforward to build, and uh, really performs very well on gray systems. Any question on? Okay. Um, so libraries, uh, we know we do, there, there are some applications that use libraries. And for those of you who are already familiar with the CRE environment, you are familiar with LibSci, uh, which the idea being that you get performance tuned, uh, platform tuned version of the libraries on Clay Cray platform available for different compilers. <coughs> what Cray has done uh, in addition to of course, the multi-core CPU-tuned version. They provided this thing they call LibSci ACC, or you can call LibSci ACK. Some people may not like it that much, but the idea being that if there exists a tuned version for an accelerator, your code can automatically, in some case, open it can automatically call the accelerated version if it realizes the node has the GPU, or you have, will have an opportunity to integrate it within your code. It's not as exhaustive, or it doesn't contain as exhaustive list of libraries and functions like LibSci, for example, because there you have FFTW, Trillinos, and all Petsy. It's rather limited now, I would say it's probably only limited to Kublas interfaces, but we are, of course, engaged in some projects to, uh, to extend it a little bit. But they do exist. and. Uh, and you can definitely get a better try. As far as we know, again, we have not tested everything exhaustively, but if you go to CUDA 5.5 web page and they list a set of libraries that are there that come with the SDK, they do exist on our system too with CUDA 5.5. Unfortunately, you cannot see it all of it on the TODI or Cray XK7 environment because it is still currently runs CUDA right now. Uh, but over time, we plan to exhaustively test all these libraries. So if, for example, you are coming from an environment, uh, for example, you have access to an InfiniBand GPU cluster, you would pretty much find same look and feel if you can come on uh, this environment. There are additional libraries, and we are not going to provide any of them. Right now, we are still investigating the usage and whether they are stable enough, uh, because some of these are work in progress. But what we are doing is, uh, or where you can find more info is, 
there is an autumn school. Unfortunately, the registration is closed, but uh, we expect slides to be available. So you can go and find a little bit more about what GPU accelerated numerical libraries are there. So if you go to CSCS webpage, you will find more info. Any comment, question? Okay, so I move on. Yes? Yes, yeah, so if you, throughout my talk, uh, I am mostly talking about the tools and the libraries that are already available. So it's not just a specific to Cray environment as such. We have a lack of libraries and interfaces for OpenCL in general. So the idea being, if they are available, we will provide them. But right now, if you go around for tools, debugging, and libraries, you find much more richer uh, environment around CUDA than OpenCL. But we are, uh, I mean, some of the, uh, uh, maybe, I think Ugo is right now busy. U Ugo, I have a question for you. In the, during that library course, are we going to talk about any OpenCL libraries? Okay. Yeah, and then there were some. So if we find it to be useful or stable enough, we will. But if the, you don't see it here, but you are interested, of course we would be interested in experimenting and trying. So yeah, OpenCL, this is something we also feel <laughs> there is a lack of support for, not just for libraries, but also for debugger and environment. So. Okay, so I moved shift gear and I call these enabling tools. So to me, this is everything, debugger, performance measurement, analysis, any tool or utility that you use to figure out once you are on the system, what if, if your code is breaking or not, com or not performing as it should, you can find out what is going wrong. And in this, for this machine, what we made sure, of course, the tools that you are used to of on a multi-core environment, they should be there and well supported. Plus, then these new environments that are coming in, and like here again, I've mentioned just CUDA and OpenACC, because the tool support for around OpenCL is really, really flimsy. Uh, <laughs> I should not say that as I speak. So I'm talking about that. If, but for example, Alenia comes out and say that we have support OpenCL, there is, it will be there on our system. So there won't be any question around it. So the idea being, so I call it parallel debugging, because for us, you bring a code on the system, which at least has MPI and some accelerated part. It may have MPI and OpenMP and some accelerated part. And the reason we chose D, uh, Alenia DDT instead of TotalView from begin, to begin with, because they were the first one who came out with OpenACC support on larger system. It is there. Uh, I'm not going to claim here that everything always work fine and perfectly because everything Everything here, OpenACC is moving very fast. CUDA is moving very fast. Integration is always an open question because it's not well defined. So it works for the most part. That's why whenever we do training and teaching, we always try teaching how to use these things in different environment. But you can definitely expect these to be available. We really, really work hard to get it to work so that when the new system comes online, you should have a debugger. If not, then we have a problem. <laughs> and the other thing is because our understanding is for the most part when people build accelerated code, they stay in their workstation environment or in an, on, a, an, on a cluster which is most probably not a great system. So they are used to of some CUDA specific tools because they are robust and they work with CUDA very well. Uh, and we didn't have all of this working on our Toady or XK7 environment. And for this machine, we made sure everything works, including the, the graphics version. And so you would expect the complete CUDA tool chain to be available on the machine. Um, and it should work as you expect it to work on any other system. Uh, the second set of enabling tools I bring is the performance. You, of course, once you write the code, 
you run it, it runs, but it doesn't run very fast, you are not going to be very happy about it. Or it runs fast on one node, but doesn't go beyond one, uh, there, and you want to find out what is going wrong, uh, it could be a non-trivial process. So Cray uh, themselves, they have their perf tools. So for those of you who are familiar with the Cray environment and Cray perf tool environment, for most of you, you who submit proposals, we ask you or mandate you in some way to provide some set of metrics. <laughs> so this may not be uh, too, too new to you. It is there. And it is extended for CUDA and OpenACC. Again, it's not a complete and full support as we would like to have from day one, but you can at least measure the data transfer rates, the time spent in kernels and functions and things like that. So the, uh, those functionality is there. What we all uh, found useful because as you can imagine, once you start doing CUDA or OpenACC programming, once you start doing direct MPI communication from the device, you can introduce all sorts of uh, sort of complications in the code where you can you and and there are so many runtimes interacting with each other it's very difficult to find out using printf or your own timer what is going wrong where so we we we, we did some study and uh, one of my colleagues he found that this vampire tracing tool <laughs> together with the uh, cuda and also with open acc it provides a very nice interface where you can see at least what is going from your CPU to multiple CUDA streams, and then across multiple nodes, so you can find where are the big gaps in the code, so you can see stalls, or if you find some really weird data transfer, you can at least go in and investigate. So this tool will be available. Again, in our training, we will teach how to use it. We will provide details on the, uh, 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 on the web pages. And then, of course, if you contact us, we, we can provide details. And most of us are among ourselves trying to learn more about these things. So it's, it's, it's a, and we have this thing available, uh, uh, these tools available across all CSES systems. So maybe some of you already know about this. We have it, had it on Todi, but I don't think it was very widely used, but it could, could be very useful in finding out problems. So this is um, the final topic for me. Uh, on this new system, as Thomas said, it's, very it's, it's a quite efficient system from a ho uh, whole design point of view. And what Cray has done in addition to that is they provided users a, an interface where user can find out themselves if their job ran, not only how much time they used, total compute time, but they can easily look up in for their own jobs if they, how much GPU time they used, and memory they used, and energy, and then GPU energy. Um, we are still learning and investigating in how to communicate and share this information, and whether everything is valid or not, but you could expect that we, for your jo job, if you do this slurm ACCT command on your job IDs, you may be able to find some of these additional parameters about your job. The granularity will be on your job basis. Um, so, but I think it's, it's pretty interesting because when you run on the system, you want to know what happened, you can probably find out a little bit more and it could be used for as a debugging uh, tool. The final thing is uh, we really wanted or really tried very hard to give you almost the same level of interfaces and support as you would expect from any other GPU accelerated cluster. So what you can expect on this system is even if, if you are not running CUDA code with multiple MPI tasks because it's supported in a spatial manner, if you have an OpenCL code or any other requirement like running a debugger where you have to have multiple processes on a node, you could support them on, on, uh, using some, uh, some job submission parameters. The other thing we did is, and this is pretty new, and we are still learning to find out how we enable that, 
But you could imagine very soon that on a compute node, you can go in, essentially log in and run some tools directly on the node. Because your login node, the node you get, doesn't have a GPU. But for some of these debugging situations, you may want to know what is happening at a compute node. And it is possible. And in fact, the and which, yeah, visual profi uh, profiler is enabled through this interface. So this is pretty recent and new. We are still understanding and evaluating it, but we see under some restricted conditions, we can make it available to, for you to find out what is happening on a single node. So I don't want to eat up Themis's time, so I will just say one final thing. You can always contact us if you have comment, questions, suggestions. Uh, so, so there was earlier an question, uh, a question about how do I ask for resources or see whether I can do something for the new system, the new PISDIN. So you can always access Cray XK7, which has now CUDA 5, and which will have accelerated version of applications. So if you are interested on one of the application slide, to try out some of those accelerated applications, you should ask for this access and try out. If for whatever reason you want to experiment with CUDA 5.5 specific features, we have an infinite band system with very few nodes. It won't have any applications. It's a very sort of uh, lightly supported uh, environment. It's called DOM, so you can get access to the system to find out if the CUDA 5.5 tool chain uh, is, uh, it, if you have any dependency there. So with that, I finish.